All right, let's go ahead and knock out WebWork 11. So uh, we've got this data about a car coming to a stop and it has some velocity numbers along with timestamps. Um, and if I were to sort of plot this data and here's time and here's velocity, then we're sort of up at 98 and then we go down to 50 and then we go down to 18 and then we finally hit zero. So to get an upper bound on how far we go, I'm gonna pretend that I was traveling 98 feet per second for the entire two seconds. And so in those two seconds, I traveled two times 98 feet per second. So it's uh, whatever that is, like 196 or something. Um, so that's how far I traveled in the first two seconds. Um, and then I'm gonna assume that I go 50 for the next two. Um, so plus two times 50. Uh, and then I'm gonna assume that I go uh, 18 for the next two and four and six, and then that would actually eat up the whole first six seconds, okay? Uh, whereas if I wanted a lower bound, well, then I'm gonna pretend that I was going 50 for the first two, and then 18 for the next two, and then zero for the last two. So my lower bound would be two times 50 plus two times 18 plus two times zero um, with poor penmanship. Okay, so that's what I had going on there, and you have to make sure to enter units or else you won't like it and all that stuff, but that's the first problem. Um, and what I want us to notice is when I plotted the data, sort of the the units of the area, so I'm gonna use this box to mean units of, okay? So this is saying units of area is the units of the Y value times the units of the X value. So my Y value is measured in feet per second and my X value is measured in seconds and I multiply them together, I get feet, right? Okay, so that was problem one. If you look at problem two, um, we have to find this area. Uh, this is a left Riemann sum. It doesn't really matter much, but uh, you know, wait a second. I can just copy and paste. I did copy and paste. Okay, so uh, here's the number three and five and six and seven. Your numbers may be different. And my function is y is equal to minus x squared over four plus two x. Your function may be different. Um, and I'm gonna call this f of x, okay? So. Uh, this corner right here touches my curve, and this vertical distance, this y distance, y is equal to f of x, it's f at 3, okay? So I'd have to plug 3 in, and then I'll find out that y value, but whatever, I can do it. So the area of this first rectangle, um, well, right here is 3.5, so the area is base times height, 1 half times f of 3. The area of the next rectangle... Well, this height is f of three and a half. So my next is base times height, one half times f of 3.5. And uh, you do this over and over again, and then the last rectangle, its height is f of 6.5. So I'd have one half f of 6.5. So these are a lot of different numbers that you have to enter into your function, okay? What I recommend you do is go to Desmos. In fact, here, I'll just show you really quick because entering on a calculator is sort of a pain in the butt and we're not gonna have you do this um, on an exam. It's just too error prone. Uh, you might have to deal with Riemann sums, but we won't have you add up eight rectangles. Like, what's the point? You know, you, you either get the Riemann sum or you don't, but it'd be very cruel of us to make sure you can do this without making an algebra mistake, right? So, okay. Here's my function, and what's nice about Desmos, so first off, um, I could rewrite this as one half, just factor it out, and then I just have f of three plus f of 3.5 plus dot, 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 plus f of 6.5. Um, you could think of it as adding all these areas. Well, they all have the same width, so you sort of just stack them all on top of each other, and you have width times the total height when they're all stacked up. You'll get the same area whatever. So now let's pay attention to my Desmos screen. Um, when I do one half times, and because I taught Desmos what f of x is, I could say f of three and see how it's giving me that number. It's computing it already. Um, f of 3.5 plus f of four plus, and I would just keep doing this until I, so dot, 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 uh, which Desmos won't understand until you get to f of 6.5 and you can close it up and, and I would copy and paste that number. So that is how I approached this problem when I entered my blanks, and that's what I'd recommend you do. 
This next thing is the exact same process, but notice the rectangles are a little bit different. The right corner up top is what touches, whereas over here, the left corner up top is what touches. And that's the difference between a right or a left Riemann sum. Um, so I'm going to consider that problem done. You just have to add those all up, and your numbers might differ, so you don't need to see me add up my numbers. Okay, did I copy and paste this? Uh, I did not. Okay. So this next one, <laughs> sorry, I'm recording this and my cat is uh, competing for lap attention compared to my iPad, so uh, thoroughly distracted. Okay, man, you all are winning out over my cat. You consider yourselves friggin' lucky. Okay, uh, so we have velocity and time and want to estimate some stuff, so blah, 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 displacement. All right, so um, uh, here, here's a fly, okay? Uh, I'm a terrible artist. Let's try it. fly. Yeah, that's much better. Great. Um, butterfly? Whatever. Okay, so it flies over here. It flies back. Okay, maybe this was a distance of one meter. So it flew over here, and it flew back. It covered a distance of two meters. Its displacement, okay, is the difference between its final position and its initial position. Its displacement is zero meters. It ends where it began, okay? So that's what's happening with these two subtle uh, word changes between displacement and distance. So what do you do? So this is a velocity graph. And um, let's just snag it and move it over. Uh, copy and paste. Stop it. Try it again. Did I not copy it? Try this one again. Copy. Paste. There we go. All right. Um, so these negative values would be like moving to the left with some speed. So this would be speed one, speed two, speed four, okay, because it's a negative four. Um, you're just moving to the left. And then positive values would be moving to the right. So um, the total distance that was moved to the left, we're gonna approximate with this area here. And you can add it up, four plus two plus one, uh, six is seven, okay. so we move to the left seven, so I have minus seven. In other words, we do what's called signed area, okay? Which means area below the x-axis like this is negative. So I have an area of negative seven. Area above the x-axis is positive. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 13. So plus, plus 13. So if I move seven units left and 13 units right, then all in all, I moved six units right. This is displacement. I've moved six units to the right. The total distance I traveled is seven plus 13, it's 20. So for me, um, displacement is six and then distance is 20, and that's how I would do that. This is the exact same idea, okay? All right, uh, is that... That's this graph. All right, so here I graphed out my f prime of x is 2 over x plus 2. Uh, find the Riemann sum going between 5 and 9. So right here is 5, and right here is 9. And uh, using right endpoints. All right, so here's how I recommend you do Riemann sums. So we, uh, we need four rectangles, and we're going from 5 to 9. So we can find the width of each rectangle by doing our total width of this interval, which is nine minus five, and then dividing it by the number of rectangles. And in general, your interval is gonna be A to B, and the number of rectangles is called N, and the formula is B minus A over N, and we label that as delta X. It's a little change in X values, it's your width. Um, and that'll be on your equation sheet. Whatever, I have four over four, that means each rectangle is width one. So what I'm gonna do is make a bunch of dividers at width one apart. Okay, so six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, great. So these are like the left and right sides of my rectangles. And now I'm looking at a right Riemann sum per the instructions. So here's my first rectangle. I'm between these two lines. I go to the right edge and I go up until I hit my graph and then I come over, okay? So here's my first rectangle. Next rectangle, I go to the right edge, I go until I hit my graph, 
and then I come over, okay? And so on and so on. Right edge, go over, right edge, go over, okay? So I would add up all of these areas, which again, you're gonna do with function values. This height is f at six, right? Here's six, I plug it in, I get f at six. The width is one, so the area is actually just f at six. Here's f at seven, f at eight, and so on and so on. Just add up all these areas. That's all that's asking for. And you're gonna do a right endpoint versus a left endpoint. So that's pretty much it for that question. All right, um, this next question. So did I graph the log function? No, but I can draw it. All right, so log looks like this. Boom, here's ln of x. And we're gonna go from three to four, okay? And I want two rectangles. It says n is equal to two. So uh, let's go ahead and just get our dividers going up. And if I do four minus three divided by two, I get a half. That's how wide this should be. I'm just splitting this right in half, okay? So this is 3.5. So if I do, um, what's this, what does it ask first? It first asks for left endpoints. So left corner touches and I go over and there's my first rectangle, left corner touches and I go over and there's my second rectangle. And so what is this height? It's the natural log of three. What is the width? It's one half. So that first rectangle is natural log of three times one half in area. The next rectangle is this next box. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Um, that was left sum. If I was gonna do right sum, then uh, the right corner touches and I move left. And I'd be looking at this. And the right corner touches and I move left. I'd be looking at this. And so that's these two blanks here, okay? All right, so. Now we have um, another velocity and time thing. So the car 7t, all right, from zero to 10. Okay, this is 10 comma 70. All right, what's the exact distance traveled by the car? It's gonna be the area under the graph. So um, you've probably seen, heard, or thought of before that distance is speed times time. That's true only if your speed is constant. So if the graph of your speed is just some flat constant, like I go for a jog at six miles an hour for two hours, well then you know I jog 12 miles. Okay, but if the speed is not constant, then it turns out you're gonna take the antiderivative of the speed or velocity, and you're gonna go from time one to time two. Okay, so from zero to 10 in this case. So I'm gonna go zero to 10 of 7t dt. That's gonna give me my distance. Um, now, they're using the word velocity in this problem, and that's true, this is our velocity, but it's positive, so it's the same thing as our speed in this case. Um, velocity can be negative, speed can never be negative. But if velocity is positive, it's the same as your speed, whatever. So this is saying that area, it's a triangle, it has base 10, height 70, so one half, base times height, that's what goes in there. All right. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay, let's copy and paste. Great, cool. All right, so um, we're told this area is 15 and this area is five. And area below the x-axis is actually negative, so this is negative 15. And it's hard to see, but this is a, b, and c for the x values. So the integral from a to b of f of x dx is negative 15. Going from b to c is positive five, and those are my first two blanks. Going from a to c, I would add these two numbers together. It's the total signed area. So I get negative 10, whereas this last positive 20, if you're gonna integrate the absolute value of f of x, well, that's the absolute value of y, so whenever y is negative, you should flip it to be positive, and you'll have some positive 15. So positive 15 plus five is where that 20 came from. All right, so now we have an average value question. 
So the average value of a function over an interval, um, it's defined as, so first you, you find the total area between that function and the x-axis. So that's this part, this is the area. And you divide that by the width. And an area divided by width, you'll get a height. And that's the average height of your function. That's what's going on here. So what's the width? It's four minus two. In fact, we could draw a picture of this, right? It looks something like this, two, four, and we're finding this area here. And how do we do that? Um, so fundamental theorem of calculus, I'm gonna take an antiderivative here. So that's seven over two x squared plus five x. I'm gonna evaluate it four and evaluate it two and subtract them. Um, actually, look, I don't wanna do all this work. This is a triangle and a rectangle. We could do it this way as well. Uh, whatever, let's just do this. Uh, so this is seven over two times four squared plus, and if I plug in the four, that's 20. So 20 minus, and now I have to plug in the twos. Uh, so that's 7 over 2 times 4 plus 10. So I have to do this minus that. Uh, and that would be my total area. And then I have to divide it by the width. Okay, Total area divided by width, you'll get some quite a average height. Um, so I would divide this by 2. So whatever that computation is, that's what I put in here. That's what's going on. Um, intuitively, this uh, this function... looks like that and at the low spot at 2 if I plug in 2 7 times 2 is 14 plus 5 is 19 and if I plug in 4 uh, 28 and 5 is 33 and we sort of just increase in like a very nice way it's not curved or anything which means like we spend the same amount of time going each speed for example or the same amount of time at the same height kind of thing and in fact, this turns out to just be the average, okay? Uh, so you get 26 if you do that. But whatever, that's beside the point. Uh, okay, so let's look at the next one. Cool, so the area, let's read this. Maybe did I paste this one? Hey, look, I've done all these problems. Uh, yeah, here it is, sweet. Okay, so use the graph and all right. Going from negative 5 to 0, we need to look at this area, and you just count it. Okay, this is, this is negative 1, so this has area negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative a half, another negative a half. This has area negative 4, so that's where that negative 4 came from. This is equal and opposite. It has area positive 4. So if I go from negative 5 all the way over here on the x value, and I go all the way to here... Uh, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 5 of my function. I'll get 0. The positive area and the negative area cancel out. Okay, but I'm not going to stop at 5. Okay, sorry, weird jump. I got a phone call and it killed the recording. Um, so we need to find the area from minus 5 all the way to 7 of f of x dx. And this is the same as the area from minus 5 to positive 5 plus the area from 5 to 7. And this part is zero. That's the whole point of all that stuff. So uh, this last part, we're told, has area A, but it's below the x-axis, so the signed area is negative A. So that's where that entry came from. All right, finally, um, the way I think this problem makes the most sense... Oh, no, I'm thinking of... Yeah, 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 sorry. So let's look at the area from 9.5 to 11 of some function f of x dx. And we know this other missing bit of information, or these other bits, I should say. Uh, but really, uh, what's going on is going from 8 to 12.5. So I don't know what my function looks like. I'm just going to do a doodle, OK? I'm just going to pretend this is f of x. It's not. But this total area is integral 8 to 12.5 f of x, blah, blah, blah. I'm told it's 10. So this total area is 10. I'm also told that if you go from 8 to 9.5, blah, 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 uh, you'll get 4. So from that 10, if I go to 9.5, this accounts for 4 of that 10. 
Whereas right. if I go from 11 to the 12.5, this accounts for right. nine of that 10. So, well, what's missing? Well, these two add together is 13. So I guess my function doesn't look like that at all. It probably looks something like this, super negative, super positive. And I have a positive nine, a positive four, and a negative three right here, because add those together to 10. Anyway, 10 minus nine minus four, that's the missing bit. It's negative three. Um, all right, now let's do this last one. So 11 to 9.5 of 10 f of x minus four dx. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite this so I can pull out that 10, 11, 9.5 f of x dx minus four, um, I'll actually write it like this, minus uh, 11, 9.5, four dx. Okay, and then there's this rules of integrals where, so if I have integral a to b of f of x dx, that's the same as negative the integral b to a of f of x dx. And I would argue this doesn't quite make intuitive sense. It's a little weird. Um, but, uh, you know, we're dealing with signed area and sort of area below the x-axis is negative, but also if you move from the right to the left, so if you're going from a b to an a, that can also get you like a negative area. Um, so I can swap these to be 9.5 to 11 instead of 11 to 9.5. And what I have to do is put a negative in front. So minus 10, and then I have f of x dx. And if I put a negative, negative, negative makes it positive. And then 9.5, 11, 4, dx. Okay. And now, let me get rid of all this and make a little room. So I know this integral is minus 3. So let's pick this up here. So I have minus 10 times minus 3 plus, and this integral well, this is the area where I have height 4, and I'm going to go from 9.5 to 11. So I have height 4 and width 1 and a half. 4 times 1 and a half is 6. So my answer is 36 for this. All right, see you next time.